Today on The Joy of Editing, I want to introduce you to the brand new TK Gen Feel panel for Photoshop Beta. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm so excited about today's video. Today, I want to introduce you to the new TK Gen Feel panel for Photoshop Beta, soon to be in Photoshop once... Uh, Gen Phil moves into Photoshop, but this is such a cool panel. And the best part about it, it is totally free. In the description below this video, you'll find my affiliate link, which will take you over to Tony Kuiper's web store where you could pick up the TK Gen Phil panel. But before you do that, let's learn about this new TK Gen Phil panel and what kind of cool things can we do with it. A quick note before we start, and this deals with Quick Mask. We need to set up Quick Mask. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, set your Quick Mask up the way I have mine. Now you'll find the Quick Mask mode button right here. What I need you to do is, now yours may be found in a different location, so just look for your toolbar, but it's going to be this button right here. It looks like this. Double click it, and you'll notice mine is set for Masked areas. Make sure yours is set for masked areas. If not, click this. If it's set up for selected areas, everything will be the opposite of what I'm doing in this video. So in order for you to stay in sync with what I'm doing on this video, make sure you have masked areas toggled on and click OK. And now you see this red overlay here. Just click that quick mask button one more time and you'll get out of the quick mask mode. But that's important that we get your TK Gen fill panel set up the same way mine is, or none of this will make sense. All right, let's get started. Let me drag my panel and dock it over here and just get it out of the way. And like I said, I'm introducing you to this panel. I'll be doing a lot more videos using this panel because it is so cool. And I have a lot of really cool, neat tips and tricks when you're generating art from photographs or you just want to make art right inside of Photoshop here, or if you want to extend canvases and all kind of stuff, you can do it all here with this uh, TK Gen fill panel and it makes it easy and you don't even need to use the contextual taskbar. It all works right inside of this panel here, which is really nice. So what I'll do, I'll just come up here to window and uncheck contextual taskbar because I really don't need it. We'll be working with this panel. The way this panel came about, Tony and I have been talking for a while and I was telling Tony about the different things I like to do with uh, Gen Phil creating art and different things like that. And so that's how this panel came about. After we've talked a bunch of times, Tony kept working on different prototypes. And at this point, it's down to this right here and Tony released it. And I really love this Gen Phil panel. And at the top here, you're going to notice we have like one to one for a one to one aspect ratio, four by three, three by four, 16 by nine. Now, these are all based on the sizes that uh, Firefly generates for your images. In other words, if I click on 16 by nine and let's just take a look here. If I go to my TK9 combo panel and click size, we can see that this image is a 1792 by 1024 pixel dimension. And that's the size that Adobe Firefly uses. So I wanted to base everything on what Adobe Firefly uses because I feel I get the best results. And then of course I can always upsize from there. But you may say, well, why do you just have this blank canvas here, Dave? Well, that's a good question. And the reason we have it here is we could come here to the prompt and just generate a piece of art. Like I could type in a prompt and Photoshop will give me an image, an AI image uh, based on the prompt that I put in. And I'll show you that in a little bit here, but I just want to show you, but that's what these aspect ratio buttons are about. I'm just going to close this document for now by clicking on this X. Now we're back to this image here. Now let's say I wanted to turn this photograph into a, like a painting. So how could I do that? Now that's where this button comes in handy. Now I could go ahead and turn this into a painting just the way it is. But I found that if you work with those 1024 pixel dimensions on the longest side, you're going to get your best results when you're trying to turn photographs into art. And so Tony came up with this button right here. See where it says 1024? It'll take any image that you have when you click this button. 
1024. You notice I have this little 1024 image here. I'll increase its size on the screen for you in a second, but you'll notice we have the original image. It's still there. It's not getting hurt, so you don't have to worry about it. I can just close this image. I'll just click the X and shut that image down. I won't save it. And I'll just use my TK9 combo panel and click this plus button a couple times just to increase the size of the image on the screen for you here. So something like that. Now it's a 1024 and if I click the size on the TK9 combo panel, you can see here that it's 1024 by 683 pixels. I'll just click cancel though. But now we can turn this into art. And to do that, we'll use these percentage buttons. We'll choose a button of choice. If you start out with like 5%, it's going to make this into a piece of art that very closely resembles the image. I don't like to start there. I like to start around 50%. So I'm gonna click on this 50% button here. Now. I just want to point out, you can see all these different selection indicators lit up here. Now, the TK Gen Fill panel is a standalone panel. You don't need the TK9 plugin for Photoshop to use it. However, it is good to have the TK9 plugin for Photoshop because it really can help you to speed up your Photoshop workflow. When you click on that affiliate link to get the free Gen Fill panel, you can see the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, and there's training videos there as well. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off everything in Tony Kuiper's web store in case you're interested. And plus, every Friday, I do TK9 training videos. I call it TK Friday. So tune in on Fridays. And there you'll find out what the TK9 plugin for Photoshop is all about in case you're interested. So that multicolored line around there just shows that we have a selection, but don't worry about it. But let's talk about these numbers. Like right now I have clicked on 50%. So basically we're kind of like right in the middle. Think of the numbers at 5% keeps you more truer to the original image when you're turning this into, say, like an oil painting. Think of it like this. The higher the number, the less it looks like the original image that you started out with. Now, I'm talking about when you're turning it into any kind of an art piece, like an oil painting, a watercolor, whatever. The lower the number, the more like the original style of the image it will take on. Okay, I'm at 50%. In the prompt, I'm going to type painting and click generate now this process takes anywhere between 15 to 25 seconds depending on the speed of your internet connection okay now there you can see the result and i'll grant you it's not really great in my opinion now you'll notice we get three images here generated by photoshop beta gen fill this is our first image and we have toggles here tony built these toggles in here so we could click this arrow and see the second example and the third okay and i don't like any of those to be honest with you we can go ahead and delete this now we have a delete button right here if i want to delete this layer and try again i can click this delete button i'm going to leave it here for now but i'll just introduce some buttons here we also have this rasterize button this is really cool to save you a lot of space because you're always getting three images from gen fill and if you decide on one that you like, so if we go through these, we ramp through these, like, and say, which one do we like the best? And I'm going to say, you know, I don't like any of them, but I, I'll say I like this one the best. If I click rasterize, right now this is a smart object, and all these images are embedded inside that smart object. I'll click rasterize, and now we only have one image, which will really cut down on our overall file size. So that's an important button. All right, then let me shut this layer off. I'm going to come back to 50%, but let me show you what happens if I use a reduce level here. And I'll use that same prompt painting. I don't have to type it in again, but let's go down to say like uh, 25%. And this is what this panel is all about, experimentation, as well as speeding up your workflow here in Gen Fill. So now let's click Generate again, and I'll fast forward the video so you don't have to wait for this. Okay, and now you can see it resembles the original image a lot closer. So there's the first image, here's the second image, and here is the third. So these are all pretty cool. And again, I'm going to pick the one I like the best here. Um, probably that one. I think the second one. And let me click rasterize just to say file size. Now I'm going to shut this one off, but I'm going to show you something. This is a tip for you. I'm going to come back to 50%. All right. And you can tell that we have a selection by the selection indicator around here. We're at 50%. I have painting here, but I'm going to go ahead and type painting of flowers in a vase on a table. 
and see what kind of result we get. So let me click generate. And now I'm getting some pretty interesting results. I really like this interpretation that Photoshop beta has given us here. Now here's the second example. That's pretty cool. And here is the third. Now I could go ahead and click generate and let, let's do it. I'll click generate. We'll generate three more. Okay, that's pretty cool. There's our first example. Now you'll notice we start out here at one. Here's two. That's kind of interesting. Here is three. That's kind of fun, a little more abstract. And then if I keep going, here's my original ones, the first one, the second, and the third. And I kind of like this one right here. So let me go ahead, because right now I have six images in here, right? Now, of course, you can use this trash can on each one of these images and delete them. If you don't like the other images, all we do is click rasterize, and now they're all gone, and this is no longer a smart object, but we've saved a ton of space which is really nice. Let's try one more example. Let's go up to say like 60%. Let me shut this off. Now, once I get to 60%, you're actually seeing marching ants around here, but we have a selection. And what we'll do is let's click generate again. That same prompt is in there. And now you can see Photoshop is really taking more artistic license here. So here's my first example. Here's my second that one's really cool. And here's my third. And I really love this. And don't forget, I can keep clicking generate and generating more just till I get something that I really like. Now, my favorite way of working with this panel is if I'm making like a painting like this, I like to start at 50% and work up or back if I need to. But it's all experimentation. And I find with these higher percentage values, Photoshop has to take more of an artistic license, but this is where it's very important. When you're up around 50%, kind of describe to Photoshop what the image is about because it's going to base the results on, the, I think, the shapes that it's seeing and the, the colors of the flowers and different things like that. Now, when I went to 60%, you'll notice that it had to go deeper into figuring out what to make for me, okay? Because I took more of the information away from Photoshop, if that makes sense. Whereas when I was here at 50%, you can see it's using a lot of red and the petals down on the ground and the color in the wall. But I find I get the best results here. But again, you do want to tell Photoshop kind of what's in the image. And that's my tip for you. If you're using values between 5% up to say like 40%, you could just probably get away by just typing painting. But when you're going higher values, like maybe uh, 40 and up, that's where you want to kind of tell Photoshop what is actually in the image. Because at the higher percentage values, it may not see all of the shapes or the colors. So it's up to you to kind of like give it a little bit of help to figure out what's there. But I find you get much better results when you use these higher values and you just tell it what is in the image. Okay, so here is what it looked like at 60%. Really like this one a lot. Now it's got some of the colors and it recognized there was petals down on this table. So that's kind of cool. I'll shut this layer off. Now, when I was at 50%, I believe on this one, you can see it represents the original image. Let's look at the original image. It's closer to that original image, right? And I really like this one. Now, this was at 50% where I typed in painting of flowers in a vase on a table. Now, if you recall this first one I've done right here, let's shut this one off and go to the first one. Remember I said I don't like this because this was at 50%, but I just typed in painting. And you see how the results are not that good. But now, if we compare it to this one right here, which was 50%, but I typed in painting of flowers in a vase on a table. Look how much better these results are between this one and this one. Like no comparison, right? Truly so much better here. So my favorite way of doing this again is going up in values like 40% and up, generally between 40 and 65%, I find the best results. But don't forget to really tell Photoshop beta what is in the image. It's really going to help. And I'm going to do more tutorials giving you more tips and help here. But this is really cool. And then the last thing I want to show you is this one right here. This is when I reduced down to like 25% and went and just typed in painting. And it looks okay, but it's not that great. But again, like this one, which was at 50%, but I typed in painting of flowers in a vase, or this one right here, which I typed in painting of flowers in a vase, but at, I believe it was 60%. So, you know, 
it's not as close to the original as the one under it at 50% is, but I really like it. So Photoshop took more of an artistic license here. So pretty cool. Now, after a bunch of experimentation, let's say, for instance, I'm going to shut this layer off. I really like this one, but let's say I like this one the best. And I have all these other trial and errors here. And you know what? I don't want to save this out with all these layers intact. So we have a button here, which will really help you out. And that's this button right here. Once you decide on the image that you like, just click this button and you'll flatten everything. And that will save you tons of file size. So pretty cool. But be expecting more of these tutorials on the GenField panel coming your way. Now, remember, this is a really small image. So let me click on size again. As you can see, it's 1024 by 683. Very small. If you wanted to print this out, you would not get a very big print. So you're going to need a product like Topaz Gigapixel AI or Topaz Photo AI to do upsizing which they do a great job. And I've done tutorials on my channel. You can look at my channel. You'll see videos on those products. I have one more thing to show you on this panel and we'll be done for today. But expect more of these tutorials coming your way with tips and tricks and help. All right, here's the last thing I want to show you. Now there's more buttons on here I didn't go over yet, but I'll save those for future tutorials. But let's go ahead and generate a piece of art right from Photoshop Beta. So I'm going to click on this button here, which will give me a 4 by 3 canvas. And if I click on size on my combo panel, you can see it's 1408 by 1024, which will give me the maximum resolution. I'm just going to click cancel. And let me type in a prompt. And the prompt I typed in was a detailed watercolor painting of a kitten playing with a ball of yarn. I'll click generate and see what we get. Okay, so there's one result. Let's click this arrow here and see here's our second result. And here is our third result. So they're all pretty cool and we could click generate again if we want to. Okay, so there's another one, kind of interesting. Here's another one, that one's cute. And here is another one. And remember, I have six images here. So once you get the one that you liked, and we could toggle through the different images and find the one we really, really like. And once you get the one you like, uh, let's see, maybe this one. It's kind of cute. Say I like this image here. Now I might have to do some cleanup, like get rid of this yarn right here and do different Photoshop things. You know what we do here in Photoshop. We can use a lot of the different tools like the remove tool and so on and so forth. But remember, once you're satisfied with an image, we can either click rasterize. It'll rasterize it and delete the other images. Or I could click flatten and just flatten this out and then work on it further. Well, there it is, everyone. Don't forget to get the new TK Gen Fill panel. Click on my affiliate link in the description below. It'll take you to Tony Kuiper's web store where you can get it for free. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.